Hi there and um, welcome. My name is Kerry and I'm the face behind the soap coach and my product based business which is the dog and I. So today I want to talk about using AI or specifically chat GPT to find the ideal niche for you in your skincare or soap business. Now I predominantly teach soap making but most of my students have a variety of products in their um, shops whether that be online or in person. So uh, the process is the same regardless. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll crack right into how it's all going to work. Um, first of all, you might be thinking, well, what is a niche and why do I need one? In short, your niche is, it's not natural soaps made with plant-based butters and oils. Um, and that's what most people come to me saying. That is your product. Your niche is your specific area of expertise or interest or target market or something along those lines and that is what will make you stand out from everyone else so to put that into perspective my uh, product based business is the dog and i so my products are all aimed at dogs they're all dog grooming products i don't make any soap to sell for um, humans so it's really easy to find me and you'll find me at the top of google because um that's what I've been doing for years and that's what I'm known for and that's what all my marketing material is around. So we'll, we'll talk about it as we go through, but your, your, your niche can be anything and it can be the person you serve or it could be the type of product that you sell. Um, just if you need a little bit more information on that, if you pop over to my website, let's just um, show you where we are. Right, this is my website, uh, The Soap Coach. I'll pop the link in the um, notes below. But just have a quick read through this, this uh, blog, which is all about niche and whether, why you need one. I want the differences between that and your product and your USP. Okie dokie. So, AI. I know it's quite horrifying. <laughs> and I know there's been a lot of um, pluses and minuses around it. And I know that you will have heard a, um, a lot mentioned, particularly if you're watching this in uh, 2023 when I'm recording it. Um, I use ChatGPT. It's the one that's most common. It's free um, at the moment. There is a paid version, but you don't need it. Um, I describe it as a cross between a PA, um, or a VA even, and a Google on steroids, <laughs> which is quite random, but that's the way it is. Used in the right way, it will save you a lot of time and it will quite possibly come up with suggestions and ideas which you had not thought of um, and what I'm going to do here is run through some scenarios so that you can see exactly how to, how to use it and how it can work for you um, what I will say is it is not an entity in its own right it cannot think for itself whatever you may think um, and it does need information from you to be able to come back with relevant and useful uh, information that you can use so if I put that into perspective, I've got a little list of prompts here that we can use. If you are starting up a soap or skincare business and you haven't got a clue what to have as your niche, and you now know that you can't just have natural soap because I've explained that that's what everybody's doing, you could pop in to, to uh, chat GPT, just this prompt, um, and we'll see what it comes up with. Right. So, ideas for soap skincare business, organic and natural skincare. Um, and as I've talked, that isn't really a niche in its own right. You will not stand out from the crowd if you um, go along those lines. Oh, what are we doing here? Men's grooming products. Uh, that's quite a good one. I quite like that one, actually. Um, that's a pretty good niche. There's not many people that just do that area. Luxury skincare products. Mm, not really niche enough. Eco-friendly products. We're all, everyone who makes soap is going down, pretty much going down the eco-friendly route. So again, that's not a niche in its own right. Customised skincare products, um, tailored to their individual needs and preferences. Uh, you could create a line of soaps and skincare products that are customised to each customer's skin type preferences and concerns. That would be quite difficult to do. I mean, you could do a range for oily skins and dry skins, etc. But it's not, again, it's not really niche enough. Um, and you can't make claims against about your soap here in the UK anyway. So um, let's go and do my first example. So this is me. 
And what I've done, and what I suggest you do, is write a little little list of your experiences, uh, maybe interests as well, because if you can create a soap business around your interests, that will make it so much more interesting for you. So let's pop this in. Uh, so we're still asking it for a niche, but we are asking, um, well, we're giving it some more information. And this is how um, chat GPT and other AI models work best. You give them the information and then they will use that information to come back with the best answer. Now, I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I have used it quite a lot now. And I've got to work, I've got to work out what does work and what doesn't work and the best ways that you can use it. So, so it's taken my, my little bit of background. So I've worked in a bank, I've been a police officer, and I'm qualified as a dog groomer, um, and also don't like plastic. And these are the ideas that it's come up with. Now you can see straight away that these are much more specific than just eco-friendly or um, natural, natural soaps etc so we've got dog soap which is exactly what I'm doing um, so that's obviously the one that I went down but clearly when I started my business I didn't have a chat GPT um, but I went with what I was interested in and what I was thinking about at the time anyway it's also come up with eco-friendly soap but again not really niche enough police themed soap don't like that <laughs> um, soap for sensitive skin um, not niche enough and soap making workshops you could offer soap making workshops where you teach others how to make your own soap that's quite spooky because obviously that's what I do <laughs> um but yeah not the first one at the top of the list is all natural dog soap so let's just expand on that a little bit and ask it um so I like point one um how could I find my ideal customer? And this is where it gets really helpful. OK, so I could attend dog shows and events, um, which I did do initially, but I didn't find um, I, I'm, I'm not a great fan of events for me. It just wasn't for me. Um, I didn't find it was particularly successful. Uh, partner with dog groomers as a former dog groomer you could reach out to other groomers in your area and ask them a supply that is one thing that I did do at the time I was part of uh, Facebook groups with dog groomers in so I got to reach a lot of potential customers through there uh, using social media that's an obvious one really um, collaborate with pet stores as it happened I did go and do a little event with one of my local pet stores and advertise in pet related publications so it's given you a few ideas there. They're a little bit vague still, um, but it's, it's got some suggestions there. So um, let's ask it a bit more about how could I market my products in a way which will appeal to dog owners who, like me, don't like plastic. Just narrow it down a little bit more. To market your natural dog soap to owners who are concerned about plastic waste, you could try the following. Highlight your eco-friendly packaging. Um, Emphasise the benefits of using natural products. Many owners are concerned about the harmful chemicals found in traditional pet shampoos and are looking for a gentler alternative, which is spot on. That's one of the reasons why I started it in the first place. Um, use social media again. You could post photos of your soap bars along with information about their benefits and ingredients. And it also gives me some hashtags there as a suggestion. Collaborate with other eco-friendly businesses. Now, that's a really good one because even though a lot of other businesses are not involved with animals, they are interested in the eco-friendly aspect. So I ended up, I've got a lot of um, wholesale customers who are plastic-free shops, for example, zero waste. Attend eco-friendly events. So that's a really good one, actually, because um, you may think that you can only work with people who have interest in dogs, but that's not the case. Going to an event which is not dog-related, but which is relevant, will still be really useful. Okay, and final question, 
and again, I'm not going to go too deeply into each topic because we'll be here for, for ages. <laughs> uh, can you come up with some ideas for a name for my business? Okay, he's thinking. Here are some ideas for names. Pour some suds, natural pooch, pure pores soap company, um, the scruffy soap company, fur and fluff soap works, bark and suds, oh, I quite like that, bark and suds, um, Paul Prince soap company, earthy dog soap company, canine clean company, woof and wash soap company. So there's some quite good ones there. Um, you would obviously need to check that they're not being used by anyone else. But again, if you're not keen on that, you can ask it for another 10. So we'll just do that. Can you give me another 10 name ideas? Doggy Suds, Clean Canine Company. Oh, they've just mixed the words up there. Pup Suds, All Natural Dog Soap Company, Happy Hound Soap Company, Furry Friends, Wolf and Whiskers, Canine Cleanse, Suds and Snuggles, Naturally Clean Pup Company. Pup Company. So some pretty good ones there. Um, they're all slightly American themed. Uh, let's just, can you come up with some that are better suited to the UK market? I don't know what it will come up with, but we'll give it a go. Beauty Paws Soap Work, Happy Hound Soap Company. Still has the company on the end, doesn't it? British Bark Soap. Mm. The Scrubbing Spaniel Company. As a Spaniel owner at the time, I would have loved that. <laughs> um, and then fair comment, when choosing a name for your business, it's important to consider your target audience. So that's just a quick overview on my niche. Um, and we got quite quickly from a soap company to a soap for dogs company. Um, so let's try something else. So we will start a new chat. And the reason why I would start a new chat is because we don't want to confuse it. it. It might look at something from earlier on in the thread and pull that out. So we'll come up with a completely new chat and start again. So the next one I've come up with, and I've got four in total. So if you want to just whiz through, you can fast forward. On, if you speed it up to 1.2 or 1.5, you can whiz through these a bit, a bit quicker. It's just a really good example. So here we go. I'm an aromatherapist with a specific interest in holistic wellness for women who are aged 45 plus. I want to start a soap business which is aligned with my background and interests. Based on my life experience, give me five examples of niches and or USP I could use for my soap business and suggestions of where I may find my ideal customer. So let's copy that. Put that into our chat. Okie dokie. And play. It's having a think. <laughs> uh, with a free version, it is sometimes a little bit slower and occasionally you can't get in, but yeah, it's free, so it's still worth hanging around for. You can leave it to uh, think in the background while you do other things as well if you want to. So, while it's just thinking about that, um, I'm just going to go into why I am going, I've concentrated on niche in this one particular video. Um, so, my core teaching for my students in the Soap Suite is three different steps. Um, step one, as you can see, is niche, branding, and purpose. And then we go on to wholesale and we go to zero. To to audience and I'm all about um, getting you sales on autopilot um, and for that you need to have a really strong brand and niche um, amongst other things so here we actually spend a whole lesson there's nine core lessons to it amongst other things but uh, we spend a whole lesson on niche um, and really getting the building blocks of that in place so when it, people come into my membership the first thing they'll be looking at if they haven't already is their niche 
um, and we'll talk about that here. And I'll also give, I do have a worksheet with 30 niche ideas on it. However, um, although I've given these ideas and it's really useful to try and get you off the ground, um, it's not a definitive pick one of these because I genuinely believe that if you use your background, experience, passions and knowledge in order to build your business, not only will you be able to talk to your customers who have got those same interests um, with that knowledge, but also you will you'll just find it much more enjoyable. It's so much more fun. So for me, I had the experience of being a dog groomer. So I knew all about the skin care. I knew about skin problems. Um, I knew about the different coat types. So for me to have the soap around that was perfect because it, mean I could, it meant I could answer any questions. I could come up with suggestions. I could write blog posts that were around my topic. Um, and that's how having your niche, it all builds upon each other. So all your social media will not be just showing pictures of your soap. It will be much deeper than that. And then you'll be able to have other you'll be able to create other material around that as well, um, such as blog posts or YouTube or Pinterest, or whatever you, you decide to do. So let's go and have a little look back and see how it's looking. So as an aromatherapist with an interest in holistic wellness for women, it's very slow, but it's coming up with um, menopausal relief soaps. Mm, not sure about that. Um, probably not ideal because I don't feel that having you can't use soap to uh, manage menopause <laughs> with the best will in the world and whatever marketing I don't think you would be able to put your heart and soul behind that um okie dokie anti-aging soaps again not really ideal um you can't make claims about your soap Relaxation soaps, infuse your soap with calming scents like chamomile, ylang ylang and lavender. This will appeal to women who are looking for ways to de-stress and unwind after a long day. That's not a bad one um, and it, it, it comes in with the whole aromatherapy and the interest in holistic wellness. So you could, um, you could certainly expand on that in your social media and in blogs and that kind of thing. Moisturising soaps, again, not really too happy with that one. It's not the best of niches. Um, so I probably wouldn't go down that road. Um, it's being really slow. It's not normally this slow. It might well be the time of day because um, I think they're just probably waking up in the US. Um, but generally, it's much faster than this. Okie dokie. Final one. Come on, final one. You can do it. I suggest, um, if you're watching this, just fast forward through this until you get to the next one. So hormonal balance soaps, mm, that's not really going to work anyway. I'm going to stop it generating there because out of all of these suggestions, and you could ask it to come up with some more ideas. You could give it a bit more information about your background or areas of aromatherapy that you particularly work with. Um, I won't go too far into it here, but I do quite like this one in the middle, which is relaxation soaps. So I'm just going to ask it to expand a little bit on that. So I like number three. Can you come up with some more ideas that I can use to... Oh, attract my target audience in this area. Okie dokie, aromatherapy kits array, offer a range of relaxation soap bars along with other aromatherapy products such as candles, bath salts, essential oils to help women create a complete relaxation experience at home. Really like that one. Subscription boxes, monthly subscription box. That's a good idea as well. Gift sets, quite like that one. Online communities, build an online community of like-minded women who are interested in holistic wellness and relaxation. Use social media platforms to share tips. I really, really like that one. Um, you could have a Facebook group as part of your business um, with women who are interested in that area. 
and then as time goes on they will become customers they will definitely become customers and uh, also um, Facebook groups tend to get more traction with your posting than um, normal Facebook pages um, educational content share educational content to your website and social media about the benefits of relaxation stress management and natural ingredients used and this is where I'm building on the whole niche thing gives you then more to talk about to educate and attract your ideal customer um, and it just becomes a rolling circle really so that's that's come out really well I'm really liking the ideas it's come up with there um, and it is something that if I was going down that road I would be looking at implementing okay so let's just ask it one more question um, where oh, no, two more questions actually where could I start looking for um, my target audience, my ideal customer? And this is only a whistle stop tour, really, because looking at your ideal customer is quite a deep topic in itself, um, which again I cover in the Soap Suite. Where could I start looking for my ideal customer? Wellness fairs and events, that's a really good idea. Wellness fairs, events and conferences. Partner with local spas and salons. Mm, that might be difficult because most of them tend to use their own ranges, I know. Sell online, um, collaborate with influencers, host workshops on relaxation and stress management at local community centres or wellness spaces. Really like that one as well because if you are an aromatherapist, you probably will have the knowledge and expertise to be able to do that. Um, you could also partner with other local businesses who are in a similar field as well. And finally, we'll ask it to come up with some names. Can you come up with some ideas for business names in the UK? Let's try and make it a bit less Americanized. Um, Zen soaps. Lavender Lane, Tranquility Soaps, Serene Suds, Calm Company, Blissful Baths, Inner Peace Soaps, Soothing Suds, Aromatherapy Haven, Renewal Soaps, Quiet Moments, Relaxation Rituals. Mm, there's some there. Um, but again, you, you could give it a bit more information than ask it to expand on those. Um, we're just doing a, a quick whistle stop. So we've gone from not knowing what niche we could have right the way through to some ideas for niche come up with one we've asked it to expand on that um, where we could find our customer possibly and some names so we've done all that in probably six or seven minutes um, and you'd you would struggle to do that I think on your own so let's start a new chat um, we've got two more to go and I just really really want to give you a good examples of how all this can work so next one, I'm a female aged 48 and have worked in corporate for my whole life and want to start a creative business around soap and skincare. I'm also interested in sports and natural therapies. Can you suggest a niche for my business which will attract people similar to me? So with this one, not necessarily have, they don't necessarily have um, other qualifications or work experience, but we do have hobbies or interests which could be relevant. So we'll come up. And see what happens here so again new chat right let's hope it works a bit faster this time than the last one it's thinking <laughs> right based on your interest experience and demographic a potential niche for your soap and skincare business could be to cater to active and health conscious women in their 40s and 50s who prioritize natural and organic products you could consider offering a range of skincare products made from natural and sustainable sourced ingredients with a focus on those for women who are physically active. For example, you could create products that help soothe sore muscles and joints or products that are designed to be used post-workout to help prevent breakouts and maintain healthy skin. Mm, possibly. In addition, you could also offer, consider offering natural therapy such as aromatherapy or massage services. That's probably not going to be right for this person. Um, to attract customers, you could consider partnering with local gyms and yoga studios or other wellness businesses. Overall, by combining your passion for natural therapy, sport and skincare, you can create a unique and appealing niche. 
Mm, that's still a bit broad, I think. Still a bit broad for me. Please, can, oh, can you narrow the niche down a bit more? Okay. Some more specific ideas. Sports skincare. You could create a range of skincare products specially formulated for athletes and active women, such as anti-chafing balms, post-workout recovery creams, and sweat-resistant sunscreen. Not sure about the sun sweat-resistant sunscreen. <laughs> that might be a difficult one. Natural and organic skincare for menopause or women. Mm, we've had that one before. Um, aromatherapy products for stress relief. Again, I don't think this particular um, person would have the knowledge for that. Vegan and cruelty-free. Again, not really niche enough. Uh, skincare products for outdoor enthusiasts. If you're an avid hiker, camper or outdoor enthusiast, you could create a line of skincare products designed to protect and nourish skin exposed to the elements. This could include products like insect repellent, sunblock and lip balm. Mm. Insect repellent and sunblock is quite difficult to do as a, a one person band, I would suggest. However, you could combine sports skincare and skincare products for outdoor enthusiasts. So I really like one and five. Could we combine those, but not with products like insect repellent and sunblock as they are not cosmetics as such. Cosmetics or natural skincare products as such. Um, oh, <laughs> I misspelt there, but it doesn't matter because it's really good at um, sorting that out for you. Absolutely. Combining the sports skincare and skincare products for outdoor enthusiasts and niche is a great idea. Here are some specific product ideas that could work well. So muscle recovery cream. Um, protective lip balm, anti-chaffing balm, sweat resistant sunscreen, oh, I've done that one again, after sun soothing spray, um, you could come up with something along those lines um, and I'm sure if we asked it for more it would, it would do so. So that could be a really good niche idea for this particular individual who's got an interest in those areas. So uh, where could I find customers? Where could I find my ideal client? Fitness centres and gyms. That's an obvious one. Outdoor adventure stores. Online forums and social media groups. Yep. Farmers markets and craft fairs. That's that would work because you're always going to get people with a wide variety of interests. Collaborate with lo local wellness practitioners um, such as yoga instructors, acupuncturists or massage therapists. Great way to reach out to potential customers who are already interested in natural therapies. That's a really good idea as well. Um, that's all very doable. So yeah, there's a few suggestions there. And finally, um, can you suggest some business name ideas? Oh. Muscle Relief Botanicals, Peak Skin Care, Trailside Apothecary. Uh, mm, again, I'm not really very happy with those, but you could you can narrow it down and, and ask it to um, make it less outdoorsy. <laughs> Shall we try it? Let's try it. Um, can you come up with some names that are a bit less uh, outdoor themed? 
and more feminine and um, what did we say this lady uh, interest in sport and natural therapies yeah so um, so more holistic I think and a little bit more and more holistic oh that's my charger that's just come out I'm going to plug that back in Lotus and Lavender Skincare, Harmonious Herbs Soap Company, Pure and Simple, Nat Beauty. You wouldn't be able to use Pure and Simple because we've got a company called that. Serenity Soaps, I think that's probably already been used. Nourishing Nectar, Zen Zest Skincare. Oh, there's a couple there which could work. Um, Graceful Glow, Apothecary. Oh, I quite like that one. Um, yeah, there's a few suggestions there. Okay, so that's example number three. And the final one, because I know we're not all women in this industry, there's some brilliant men out there too, is I'm a 45-year-old man working in the science industry. I'm very stressed by the environment and want to start my own soap business. I learned soap making um, a couple of years ago. My other interests are around all kinds of music and surfing. I would like to have a soap business that is linked to my interests and which possibly may use my science background. Can you suggest any niche ideas? So this is quite an interesting one. It'd be good to see what it comes up with. And I know from experience that it comes up with something different every time you put it in. So um, I've got no idea what it will come up with. OK. It's great to hear. It's a bit slow again, isn't it? So those of you who are already in the soap suite and are working your way through this bit, this could be really helpful for you. Um, and I've, I've put it on YouTube because I just feel that I don't want to overwhelm you with so much stuff in here. Because if you haven't watched the preview that I've got, it's, there is quite a lot in here. Um, and it's, it's, it's quite a few months work probably. So in niche branding and purpose, we've got niche branding mission vision values um wholesale is all about wholesale um with a toolkit and finding businesses to work with oh wrong one i don't want to do that and do, 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 zero to audience is all about email marketing and growing your audience and followers um and that's just a small part so yeah there's plenty in here to keep you going with all the other stuff on um YouTube being a, an extra. Right, let's see what it's come up with. Surf inspired soap. You could create a line of soaps that are inspired by the ocean and surfing. You could incorporate ingredients like sea salt, seaweed and essential oils. See, I really like that one already um, before we've even got any further. Um, that could be a great one. And you could also have uh, balms for surfers, that kind of thing, because they do get wetsuit chafing, don't they? Um, it's on a go slow again now, isn't it? Do, 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 do. Two. Music inspired soap. So it picks up on your interests straight away. Um, what I would also suggest is if you have qualifications in particular areas, pop that in as well because you don't know what it might come up with that you hadn't thought of. So the more, in, the more information you give it, the more relevant feedback and information it will give you. Right. Do, 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 do. Inspired by different genres of music. That's an interesting one. For example, come along. You will definitely have to fast forward through some of this. <laughs> Put it on home two times. I think it is because it's lunchtime. I would never normally have this problem, but hey ho. You could have a soap centered with lavender and vanilla for a calming. Right. Classical music inspired line. OK, yeah, that would work. Or a soap with bold citrus notes for a vibrant rock inspired line. OK, yeah, that could work as well. 
You could also create packaging that incorporates music related designs or song lyrics. Now that's actually a really good idea. You could have um, music sheets or you know, what looks like music sheets as part of your packaging. Um, so yeah, that could work. Or packaging that looks a bit like, um, I don't know, album covers maybe. That's possibly going a bit too far. With your science background, you could create a line of soaps that incorporate scientific principles. I need to wait and see what this is going to say because I'm not sure how that could work. For example... Mm. So that's, no, that's, I'm going to stop it there. Let's stop it there. Right, so let's go down the, oh, I like both of the top two, but the surf inspired soap is probably the more common one. So let's go with the music inspired. Um, so I really like number two. Could you come up with some more? ideas about how this could work. I'm going to keep it quite an open question and see what happens. You could create soap bars shaped like musical notes. Mm, that probably wouldn't work. Um, album cover soap. Oh, that's weird. Another idea would be to create soap bars that are inspired by iconic album covers. Oh, that's quite genius, actually. I know I said it and I didn't know how it would work, but it does come up with some ideas. So you could have a soap bar that features a yellow submarine or one that's expired by Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon album cover. The only thing I would say is be really, really careful about copywriting on those. So you'd, you could have to be careful about how you did that. Band expired, inspired soaps. Uh, that would be a difficult one to do, again, without breaching copyright. Um, song, uh, musical instrument soap, mm, that would be difficult to do. Uh, soap, song inspired soap, mm, again, might be a little bit of uh, an issue there around um, copyright. Let's try again. I really like the idea of theming my soaps around. We go for music genres because you're not going to get into trouble for that music genres can you help me with ideas i'm always quite polite to it because you never know where ai is going to end up so stay on the right side of it i'm joking on that one but <laughs> you know what i mean uh right let's see what it comes up with here uh classical music Soaps, you could create soaps that feature scents like lavender, rose and jasmine. Uh, jazz music, you could create a soap bar that has a bold and spicy scent like cinnamon and clove. Rock music, bold scents like peppermint and eucalyptus. Um, you could use activated charcoal to create a black soap, which could be a nod to the rock genre's darker side. Country music, for a country music inspired theme, you could create soap bars that feature scents like vanilla and honey. Uh, pop music. Fun and fruity, like grapefruit and strawberry. Um, electronic music, um, energising scents like peppermint and citrus. Oh, there's some good ideas there. That is great. How about a soap name idea for each of the above? I'm going off on a tangent bit here. I'm getting quite carried away now because this is not about using AI to name your soaps. But um, as we're here, classical music, serenade soap, crescendo cleanse, sonata suds, melodic moisture, jazz. Oh, see, these are great. There you go. Your job is done. And finally... How about a name for my business? Wave and Melody Soap Company, Surf and Sound Soap Company. Uh, okay, it's it's got a bit confused here because it's um, mixing the surfing and the music, but you get the gist. 
Um, it's come up with some, some fairly decent ones there. Harmony and foam. Mm, OK, <laughs> let me just try once more. Can you stick to the music theme? Soap Sessions, The Lava Lounge, The Soap Stage, Soap and Sound, Melody Soaps, The Soap Symphony, Harmonious Suds, Rocking Suds, Suds and Strings, The Soap Serenade. There you go. I could not have made those up. So that is my little introduction. We've covered four different, um, different types of person with different interests and different experiences and came up with four separate niches which could work really well. Um, and obviously you'll be completely different. So um, I'd love it if you come back to me and let me know how you get on or if you find it useful. I will pop the link to my um, website, which has got the Defining Your Soap Business Niche uh, blog on there. And, I, and you'll also find the links to the Soap Suite and things like that. So if you really want to get in deeper into this, come and join us in the Soap Suite um, and you'll get a bit more information and you'll also get feedback and um a bit of coaching from me on um, any ideas that you come up with and how I think they might work. Okie dokie, thanks for watching.